beautiful souls. Hello. <gasps> oh, I'm excited. This feels good. This feels really, really good. Thank you for being here. I know that a lot of you are out with your mamas today, celebrating your beautiful mothers on Mother's Day, and I fully honor you, and I fucking see you in that. To those of us um, who, um, to those among us who have lost their mamas, or uh, longing to be mamas and are yet to be, I'm just sending all my love to you, and I'm sending all of my um, my gratitude and my strength to all of the beautiful women out there. To be a mother is to be the creator herself. Um, we all, men and women alike, have the power to birth life within us and just honoring those who have taken up that call and really um, called in like their soul creation, whether that's a baby, a human, human life, whether that is a book, whether that is um, a business or a blog, whatever it is that you felt called to start or that you're trying for, whatever it is that you're holding in your sacred womb, I just feel you in that. And um, I'm just really fucking thankful for all the mothers out there today, for um, the mother within myself as well, just honoring the mother in all of us and our ability to nurture, our ability to create life, and um, our ability to create worlds and universes within us. Yeah, just honoring that today. Oh, it's a little bit noisy outside. I'm praying that you guys can't hear that, or if you can, it's not gonna impact the quality of this live, but I think we'll be okay. Say hello when you're jumping on. I know that a lot of us just like to pop on and watch and sit on the sidelines, and that's totally perfect. But also just, um, yeah, just asking for a little bit of interaction in this live. I love it when you guys speak to me as I'm speaking. I feel like it gives me, um, it's this beautiful energetic like circle and bubble that we create together. And we all, like I'm a big believer, I know to be, what I know to be true is that we all have pieces for each other. And I'm not here to, um, to teach or to you know, lead from the front or be ahead of anyone. Like I, I've, I'm fully aware that there are, you know, within you, there lies pieces that would like radically, fundamentally transform my life for the better and for the good. And likewise, I have pieces that would radically transform your life for the good as well. We are all like, we all have pieces for each other. And especially if you feel drawn to me and my message, or if you feel drawn to um, the energy that I give off or just like what I'm here to create, there's, it's very, very likely that you have pieces for me or I have pieces for you. So please always, if you feel like, um, I don't know, if you feel like pulled or if you feel called, if you feel this beautiful magnetic desire between us, please always just reach out and send me a DM. And um, I've got zero attachment to what wants to come through and be created between us. I'm always super excited to feel into the infinite possibility of new connections um, and all of the like, delicious, limitless potential that exists there. But what I wanted to really speak about this afternoon was this incredible ability that we have to transform our fear into faith. And for those of you who have um, heard of the term alchemy, or if you've read the book, The Alchemist, you would know that we all have, or if you've just experienced this in your own life, you would know that we all have this incredible ability within us um, to turn whatever it is that we've been given, which for a lot of us and a lot of it, the cases um, since we've been really little, um, is fear or anxiety or self-doubt or um, trauma or failures like passed down to us from generations. And we um, were not taught, or I certainly wasn't taught that I actually like had the ability within me or I could use these tools at my disposal and these gifts that I've been given to actually like radically transform like what I've been given into what I needed to flourish and thrive. And I kind of was taught, I, I really like, I learned from a very young age that I would have to look outside of myself. And so I looked to teachers and I looked to friends like peers and I looked to mentors later on in my 
professional career and professional development um, and personal development. And I looked at my parents and I looked at my dance teachers and it wasn't until I came to a million dead ends that I realized that when I actually closed my eyes and look within, looked within, I already had everything I needed to transform um, my, my fear into profound faith. And something that I feel like we don't actually get taught the tools to be able to do this. And that's what, um, or I certainly wasn't taught the tools to be able to do this. And that's what fuels me, a lot of what fuels me every single day to keep sharing this truth with the world is that we, our spiritual um, or like our metaphysical education often comes in the form of dogma, it often comes in the form of church, and it often comes in the form of really organized religion. And there's absolutely um, no charge or judgment for me around things like, um, you know, going to church or being part of like an organized um, religious or faith community. Where I find that there's a gap in our education or there's like a big piece that's missing for a lot of young people is around our own personal empowerment and our own personal power. And I know for me, my faith upbringing or my like religious upbringing, um, or not that it was a religious upbringing, but the upbringing that I had around faith and religion very much taught me that my like my savior or that my um, my rescuer and my king was going to be outside of myself. It was this um, kind of ethereal image that I got of like who and what God was or who and what like Jesus or Krishna or whoever like the particular deity was that you were brought up worshiping or that you grew up learning stories about. But what I came to realize and what I feel like my, you know, my, my personal faith journey has led me to a discovery of is that I feel so much more in my power and I feel so much more deeply embodied when I realize that I have the power of the creator within me. And I realized that all of the fears that I had about the world and all of the fears that I had about life that had been, I guess, kind of passed down to me from generations previous, but also just like, I don't know, they just came from like the media and watching the news and watching movies and my parents constantly being telling me like, be careful. Like I just had a lot of fear about life and I was just really, really afraid to, to sort of like fully be here on the planet. Like being here felt kind of scary and being here felt really like, oh, like I kind of just don't really want to be here. Like this is weird and awkward. And having that beautiful, like I've always had this beautiful innate spiritual connection from a young age and I didn't always know how to articulate it and I didn't really always know how to process it. But I feel like knowing that I was eternal and having the sense that like I am actually a soul having a human experience, I was always very much aware of the fact that I didn't actually have to be here if I didn't want to be. And I've spoken about this in other videos before and we can have a, like a little bit more of a chat if you guys want to hear more about that. That's perfect. But I kind of always like I always knew that I actually, um, yeah, I really didn't have to be if I didn't want to be. Um, just honoring the beautiful humans. Hi, Josh. Hi, Lachlan. Hi, John. Hi, Maddie. You guys, I would love, please put some emojis below and tell me what you're feeling on this beautiful second Sunday in May. Um, we're almost halfway through the year, which is crazy and so exciting. So I would love to know this is a completely like zero judgment zone. Um, give me a couple of emojis or let me know some words as to how you're feeling coming into the middle half of this year, but also just today. Like, let's just like drop the judgment around like time, time is an illusion anyway. Let's just bring it back to like this moment right now. Drop in, tune in, close your eyes, take a couple of deep breaths. We can do this together if you like. We'll take a few deep breaths together. But just drop in and let me know whether you're watching the replay or you're watching this live or you're watching it on YouTube later. Just pop in the comments. How are you feeling right now? And what's like alive for you? What's present? 
Well, maybe what's bubbling inside you? Like what's the thing that's like tapping you on the heart and knocking on the door of your soul being like, hello, it might be a project. It might be a creation that wants to come through and be birthed into life. Maybe there's a lot of resistance around it. Maybe you're feeling like you've got all this creative energy bubbling, like bursting, like all the way up inside of you, but you, you're doing everything that you possibly can to distract yourself from it and pretend that it's not there and pretend that it doesn't exist. I fully honor all of your experiences right now and it's all welcome and it's all perfectly perfect and okay. <sighs> if there's one thing I just know to be true and I know for sure, it's that life is always guiding us home. And this speaks obviously to the message, but regardless of where you are right now, regardless of how you're feeling or what's going on, there is this like natural infinite intelligence to life that is constantly like recreating opportunities for us to return to ourselves. And yes, it's a choice. And yes, we get to choose whether we want to listen to those nudges or we want to actually listen to the part of us that's longing for to be held and heard and listened to. But there's also this beautiful, like these synchronicities when we know, um, when we can fix like where we can put the lens on to be able to see them. And this is the prayer I say every morning. It's like, God, give me, um, give me eyes to see the beauty in the world today. Because it's not that the beauty is not in the world. It's not that the beauty has gone from the world. It's just that our lenses have gotten a little bit foggy. Really? <laughs> I've got these glasses and they're my blue light blocking glasses and I can put them on now, but I actually don't know where they are. But what I found recently, they've gotten really scratched and they've gotten really foggy. And every time I go to put them on, it's like, I kind of feel like I'm looking through some like, some really like hectic scratches. If you know, if you've had foggy glasses, you know what I mean. But recently I had them on and when I took them off, it was like, the world was so crystal clear and everything was just like in, it was just so much brighter. Everything was brighter all around me. And I, I just know that it's not when we're in fear and if we can't see the magic and the beauty in the world, it's not because it's not there. It's just because our lens has gotten a little bit foggy or our lens is a lens that has, doesn't belong to us. It's been passed down from like from generation from generations past. Or maybe our lens has been like scratched by trauma or by past experiences. I know this is like a massive one for me when, um, and something that I've really like, I'm really leaning into fully fucking surrendering and giving over and healing. But my, um, just certain things that have happened in my life, like I went on um, a trip to LA for three and a half months a couple of years ago. And some of you know about the story, some of you don't. Um, as I'm feeling, there's like a lot of resistance in my body to sharing this story. And that's completely, I'm just honoring myself in that. Um, but it was a time in my life where I felt like God kind of abandoned me. And what I felt in that season was that the life that I was experiencing was so different or the external reality that I was experiencing was so different to the expectation that I had and the desire that I had for the life that I wanted to create, especially in this particular season, that I made it mean and I felt like I was, I'd been completely abandoned by the divine and I'd been completely abandoned by life. And I have used that experience in the past to validate my contraction and to validate my reasons for being closed off from life. And if I'm feeling, if I was feeling in the victim or if I was feeling scared or if I was feeling sad or like I just didn't want to do anything, I would use that story and I would replay that story over and over and over again as like, this is why I won't open to life. This is why I'm not even going to fucking try anymore. This is why I just, I just give up. Like this is just too fucking hard. And I would use that story and I was so stuck in the cycle and that repetitive and just going round and round. You guys know what I mean, right? Like going round and round and round of like, this is an experience that happened to me and I'm going to use it to like, it was like I was recreating the experience over and over and over again within me. And so I found it really difficult 
to open up to life and to say yes to life and to actually to really like show up for anything to show up for my purpose to show up for my work to show up for my relationships to show up for anything <sighs> and it wasn't that story like that story is not over and that story is like there's been things that have that story isn't finished I get to rewrite it again and again and again, however many times I want to, until I come to the revelation and the understanding of what role that played in the piece of the puzzle that is my life. And I know, <laughs> I choose and I know. <sighs> that experience served a deeper purpose. It doesn't matter that I can't see it or can't see all of it. It doesn't matter that um, it sometimes still feels a little bit like triggering when I think about it. It doesn't matter that sometimes my mind brings it up as a reason why I could, shouldn't keep going or I can't like step out in faith. It doesn't matter that I don't know what was going on there below the surface even though I like pride myself on knowing why everything happens always, I get to trust that that situation played a greater role in my unfolding and my becoming than I could ever possibly imagine. And that even if I can't see it up here, like above the ground in the fruits of like the life that I'm experiencing, it's working beneath the, beneath the surface and in the soil. It's, sowing seeds of magic and it was grounding me grounding me even more and I just I don't have to know any more than that right now one day I will and whether that's in this life or the next that's okay but what I went through and what happened and what happened within me and around me and what I felt it was all valid. It was all completely valid and okay. And it's played a deeper role than I can ever imagine in helping me become the woman that I am and the woman that I'm becoming. Yeah, I choose that. I choose that belief. Yeah. It's helped me lay the foundations for all that I'm creating now, which is really exciting. Yeah, just to preface, there have been like presents that there have been pieces that have dropped in around that. And a lot of it does feel really good. And more of it gets to keep unfolding. And I'm just, it's just the mystery, right? It's the grand fucking mystery of this life. And I feel like that's one of the beautiful ways that I shift out of fear is accepting, trusting and surrendering to the greater unfolding and also the mystery. And when you think about it, it's kind of fun. When I think about mystery, I think about intrigue. I think about, I think about seduction, but I also feel this incredible, it's this beautiful secrecy that's created in the intimacy and the depth of the relationship between life and myself. And I know that like, just like if, you know, any relationship, I get to lean into the mystery between or in that exists within my relationship with life. And rather than letting that scare me or rather than letting that I'm just gonna let that excite me. I'm just gonna let that really excite me. And the mystery of life then becomes this thing that I'm enamored by, and I'm intrigued by, and I'm a little bit enthralled by. And life becomes the goddess that I'm constantly leaning into and letting unfold through me. And... <laughs> And I don't have to 
pry her for all of her secrets. I don't have to beg life to reveal to me the meaning behind every little thing. Because in the, at the end of the day, I can create whatever meaning that I choose and that I want. I just get to surrender and trust the magic and the mystery of life's miraculous, infinite unfolding. Some questions for your inquiry if you feel like journaling on this and just sitting with these questions where am I still blocking the flow of life and what's causing me or where am I still blocked from receiving the flow of life within me yeah so it could be a physical place within your body could be somewhere in your life that you're maybe not looking at or avoiding whatever it is where am I resisting could be some fear that you need to let go of we can chat about that it's all perfect it's all magic it's all divine it's all serving a greater purpose than you could ever even imagine full faith it's a decision We just get to choose it. I'm thankful for the opportunity to show up here today. And for all of the beautiful humans in this family, in this tribe. I see you. I love you. Hi, beautiful Tegan. Thank you for being here. I love you guys. <sighs> All right. I'll see you really soon. Bye, loves. <laughs>